when I go compromise. I wonder how we do it on the right side. I wonder how we do it on the right all right, so we've uh, just dropped off uh, meat delivery at Borough Market and we're heading back to the farm. But what are we doing on the way, Liam? So we're calling in at Peterborough. I bought a new van, subject to viewing it. A chap called Veli, but we've dealt with for years. He runs a hire fleet and I bought one of his ex-hire vans to add to our fleet. Agreed on a price and everything, but just need to call in at Peterborough and have a look at it, make sure it's we're happy with it. Then we'll carry on up north to the farm. That's Pete about man's hour. I rang him at six and he didn't answer. And I gave him a load of it, an ear full of abuse. Go on, so. Look at the sky. Valley. I would imagine you've got five, six hundred kilos of sort of payload. Mm. That's all over to it. Yeah, it's good then. So we might borrow 35, 38 on that kind of value. Just if you're good at something, find a little niche, just work on it. Don't think and suddenly. Something that's stable, people yeah, are always going to need. Suddenly don't think, oh, I'm going to open up a restaurant or I'm going to buy shares in a football team. Or, he said, just stick Ooh. with what you know. Well, I, I, Beef dripping. Wow, wow, wee wow. <laughs> so this is something that a lot of our customers are gonna be super excited about. It is gonna be our own home kill, completely traceable beef dripping. We don't actually kill them at home. Well, it's the cows that we've slaughtered of our own. We've been collecting fat from all of the, the beasts we've been butchering over the last like six months. And we're gonna be turning it all into beef dripping 100% one ingredient, beef dripping. Mm. Um, and this is super important to us because we try to utilize everything off the carcass and for years we've been sort of putting it into burgers, wholesaling it off to, uh, to people that need fat, but now it gives us the opportunity to use all the fat that comes off our own animals and it's something that our customers are gonna be really excited about. Ready to go, city boy. Walk around and have a look, see what jobs we do. I'm just pushing these shells back into their straw bedded area and then I'll scrape this bit of concrete up. I do this every day just to keep them nice and clean.
by getting some wellies. Gregor, come around the corner and say what you say you're about to do, what you've just done. So I'm back from London. There's nothing fucking, <laughs> fucking exciting about it, is there? So we've been in London all morning, just got back to a farm, we're gonna scrape out the cows, give them some more food, and then we're all set till the morning. So what are you doing here, Sari? So a bit of moisture in the air and if the rain blows in, it makes the feed for some reason sort of stick together slightly. It goes sort of rock hard. So when you try and scoop it up in a bucket, it's harder. So I just loosen it up with this bar before I scoop it and it just makes, makes it all a bit easier. There you go, you're good. Uh, what feed is this that they're having? So there's two types. There's a finisher, which is this one, which we call a meal. So it's made up of nuts and ground up cereals. And we've got a grower one, which is a nut. So no, no like flaky cereals in it. The growers are slightly higher protein nuts. So that helps them grow rather than put on fat as we, or what we call finish. So there's three stages to cattle. They're being reared when they're on their mum drinking milk. And then they're growers between when they're weaned off their mum and they get to about 450, 500 kilos. And from 500 kilos onwards, we give them a bit of this every day, which is lower protein, higher starch, and it, it helps them put on fat and marbling, which is what we're looking for in the butchers. Brother, wow! So I've just got to give the cake to the cows. I've let my dogs out. I'm going to go hedge cutting and then I'm finished for the day. Banter. Mm -hmm. 